So remember when I said in the uh, live stream today that uh, you guys were getting uh, the review for Young Hellboy The Hidden Land soon? Well, here it is. <laughs> here is soon. Um, yeah. So this is uh, Young Hellboy The Hidden Land, I, obviously. This is a recently released new Hellboy comic from Mike Mignola. Um, this is a nice little hardback. I really like it. This is, of course, the uh, cavalcade of comics that uh, uh, Mount Vernon Kid sent me. Chris, thank you again. Uh, yeah, like I said in the other in the unboxing live stream that I did a little earlier today, this is uh, part of this is part of box one. I'm kind of mixing up uh, the whole thing. It's like a giant stack on, on my desk that I just kind of slowly pick away at. <laughs> um, anyway, so, Young Hellboy The Hidden Land. Let's get into it. This is a four-issue miniseries that um, is a lost adventure of Hellboy and Professor Broom lost on a island outside of reality. And what's on that island? A lot of the typical... Uh, <laughs> a lot of the typical Mike Mignola stuff. So, what I mean by that is, you have a vampire queen, you have mi weird magic from the Hyborian era. It's shocking that Mignola never did a, Co a Conan the Barbarian comic. At least not to my knowledge. I don't think he... I know he's done covers for Conan the Barbarian when he was over at Dark Horse, but I don't know for the life of me if he ever did a Conan comic. At least art... at least in the least art-wise, or even wrote one. Um... He clearly has a lot of love for the uh, Hyperborean, the Hyborian Age, so this kind of shows here. And we also have uh, a rarity of Mike Mignola drawing dinosaurs, too. Um, I'm going to come out and say that this comic feels like it shouldn't be a Hellboy comic. And what I mean by that is um, Hellboy in here is kind of like a more like a vehicle for than anything else, because this was clearly meant to spin out of something else. Like, this is clearly meant to like, hype up another project that, um, part of the Mignola-verse, and what I mean by that is we are introduced to a character named Scarlet Santiago, who is, who was, uh, who landed, who, uh, landed in this, in, who fell from the sky in her plane, she was a daredevil, and she landed in this place, and the ape people of this island more or less merged her with their ape, great ape spirit, and now she can turn into a giant gorilla, and fight dinosaurs and vampires. Yeah, and the, <laughs> yeah, this is kind of like atypical uh, Mignola stuff. When he wants to like write a uh, write a new character, he just kind of puts Hellboy there and be like, "Be prepared for more adventures with that character." It was the same thing with Sir Edward Gray. It was the same thing with Lobster Johnson, and I imagine it's going to be the same thing with it. It was the same thing with Frankenstein. Frankenstein Underground. Gonna be the same reason with uh, Scarlet Santia with uh, Scarlet the Sky Devil. So, yeah, this is more like a, a. I would basically call this a backdoor pilot comic to uh, Scarlet. Now, it's interesting because this is like, even though this is young Hellboy, this does have like a level of violence and gore that you expect. Not gore, I should say. It is violent. A level of violence in Hellboy that you expect, and yeah. It is, but it is pretty cool to see Hellboy as in his younger years and alongside Professor Broom, his father. I like, I really like the dynamic. I wish they would do more, and that's kind of what hurts this comic because I was kind of hoping for more, like a, a seeing more of the dynamic between Professor Broom and his and um, Hellboy. But we barely get anything like that. It's just more like keep up, Hellboy. You know. Uh, that's a good job. Like, there's no, like, moment where Broom and Hellboy are, like, having a private moment together. It's not like they're... Because this is still, like, a younger Broom who is still acclimating to being Hellboy's father. And we don't really get anything. It's not like Broom has, like, this crisis of, um... I, you know, am I being a good dad? Am I doing the right thing? And I know there are comics like that, but I feel like with a comic of young Hellboy, I feel like we it, it was kind of a missed opportunity for that. Um, the artwork is pretty good. I don't think I do think Mignola takes a backseat to the artwork. Um, 
The art is done by Greg Rousseau. I hope I'm saying that name right, with artwork by Dave Stewart. Um, let me show you... It's very, like, brighter Mignola. It's clearly that. Um, let me show you, like, a good piece of artwork right here from these two, and you'll see what I mean. Um, looking for a good one. And there is good ones here. I just got to find, like, a perfect encapsulation for this. Ah, that'll do. See? Giant bat monster. That'll work. Um, this comic is uh, does have an interesting villain in Vespira, the vampire queen from a different era. Um, it's really cool, but we've seen a lot of vampires, especially in Mignola's work, where it is very vampire-centric. I... I think, like, it is kind of... It's starting to get a little one-note in some cases. Not that I'm saying it's a bad thing. It's just that Mignola does a lot of vampire stuff. And he kind... It's kind of like he doesn't seem to be branching out as of late. I saw it in Baltimore. I've been seeing a lot in his later Hellboy stuff that he's just kind of, like, in a vampire rut. And it doesn't seem to change when he does Hellboy stuff. Thankfully, like, I'm not saying that's bad. I really love Mike Mignola books. I really do. And this one's pretty fun. It, like, I know I've been sounding like I've ragged on this book, but I actually kind of like it. Um, it's a very much a callback to, like, classic, like, pulp stories. That's what Hellboy's always been, is, like, a callback to, like, classic pulp-era stories and classic movies like this is a very this is like if you take out hellboy this is literally a ray, ray harryhausen movie waiting to be made like this is a lost ray harryhausen movie in here because you have dinosaurs you have a freaking giant ape dinosaur t-rex fight it's clearly supposed to be kong you even have a giant gorilla giant bat god fight it's awesome so there is really good stuff. There's really some good stuff in here, and a part of me is like, maybe we didn't need Hellboy for this book because he does literally all other than golly gee, that's weird. Um, Broom does more here. Like if you wanted to have a Mignola character in here, you just could have just done Broom, really. Um, would I recommend this to new Hellboy readers? Yeah, if you're a, you are a major Hellboy fan, I'd say pick this up. I love Hellboy, and I'm not trying to say this is bad, I just feel like this didn't need Hellboy in it. Like, this didn't need to, like, I feel like, um, Hell, like, Mignola wanted to put this care, uh, put Hellboy in here to, uh, basically, like, hype up the character and have, like, marquee, like, marketing value, but really, like, you're Mike Mignola, you can literally create anything and people will buy it. <laughs> And it, it, it's not like the story ends. Like it clearly sets up for a for a for a um, spinoff with the characters in the hidden land. So yeah, it's not like yeah, it's clearly meant to be a backdoor pilot to his other to his other work. Um, yeah. Also, just side note, I've always been of the proponent that Hellboy com Hellboy comics, while they are scary, can easily work as a comic to. Um, introduce children to reading comics. They're, they are scary, and there is a little bit of violence there, but it's not, like, overt. It's a nice little... It's an, I think it com you could really give Hellboy comics to kids. I really do think... And that's the weirdest thing I've... Like, it, it's kind of odd to say, but I really do think that Hellboy works as a, as a intermediary for young kids to read comics outside of Marvel and DC. Like, this, it's kind of like um, introducing your kids to their first horror movie. Like, something like Jaws, or Gremlins, or Ghostbusters, it counts. It's spooky, but not overtly scary. Like, it's a nice little intermediate, it's a nice introduction. And I think this would work, um, as well. So, I recommend it. Anyway... So you guys tell me in the comments below, if you've read it, what did you guys think of Young Hellboy The Hidden Land? Do you guys like it, hate it? Comment below, let me know. Chris, thank you once again, I know you're watching this. Other than that, hope you all enjoyed this. If you haven't already, hit the link below, head on over to my Patreon, where if you hit the fourth tier, you can not only check out all the exclusive content over on my Patreon, there are other tiers that just let you check out exclusive videos on Patreon, but if you hit the fourth tier, you can not only do all of that, but also send me requests for videos to do for me to do here on YouTube. Other than that, hope you all enjoyed this. I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the multiverse.